Hello everyone, hopefully you can hear me. Welcome to the very first Edinburgh International Heart Festival live Facebook stream. This is a little bit of a new thing for us. Um, as you know, we're on our second online festival, but so far we've really only been doing pre-record videos. So here we are in my spare room in my uh, tenement flat in Glasgow. My name is Rachel Hare and I'm one of the committee members of the festival and I'm also teaching this year and performing this year. So you might recognize this background from last year. This is where some of the VEIHF festival was hosted. But this year, of course, we've gone a little bit more upmarket. We are in houses all around the world, but we are also hosting you our concerts from Greyfriars Kirk in stunning Edinburgh. So it's been an absolute pleasure to be there. And I hope you've all enjoyed tonight's concert. We had the wonderful Karina Hewitt and... Um, David Milligan. We had the winner of the Ian McLeod Young Composer competition, Yota Maserli from Greece. We had the Young Chinese Musicians of the Rainbow Musical Society. We had Maeve Gilchrist and we had the Tar of Chio. So it was a fantastic night of music. So I hope that you've all been enjoying that and last night's concert. Now, please do let us know where you're listening in from. The chat window is open. I'm having a look already. I'm seeing that Tom is watching from Japan and Anita from down south and Isla from Israel. It's great to have you guys familiar faces online with us. And today, well, tonight, we're just going to have a wee bit of a kind of chit chat and some banter with um, some of our EIHF artists, tutors and friends. So we have a guest for us now. I'd like to all uh, get you to welcome Anne-Marie O'Farrell. Before she comes up, we're just going to enjoy a little bit of her music. Wonderful stuff there from Amri, and we're going to ask her to join us now. We're going to hopefully have her pop up on screen, and she's doing. Hello, good evening to you, Anne Marie. Hi, hi, how are you? Not bad. How's your day been? First day, first full day at the EIHF for you this year? Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Um, students from all over, uh, from the far side of the United States, um, California, Canada. Um, I, I can't even uh, sort of get my head around all the all the places. I'm sure it's been likewise for the other tutors. So because of having the classes at different times a day, it's making it possible for a much more worldwide presence, which is just fantastic. Yeah, so more Europeans in the morning. Really international. Then, yeah, great. Yeah, it's, it's great. I had some folk in from the West Coast of the US as well. I was like, but it's but it's like 5 a.m. where you are. This is just amazing. People are so enthusiastic about playing harp that they're going to get up at hours, all hours of the morning to learn with us. It's great. It's fantastic. So good. So listen, Amory, that was a, a little bit of your kind of latest album in the Bach Prelude uh, from the Cello Suite number one. Now you've kind of become known for playing a lot of Bach's music on the lever harp. And I think I remember myself actually being wowed and then the whole audience at Merkiston um, when you started to play a Bach piece and you were just flipping levers all over the place. And I think everybody's mouth just dropped open. And that's what your course is about this year. Is that right? We're kind of lever flipping. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I think that piece you might be remembering might be the chromatic, uh, chromatic fantasy. Uh, which is is it's almost trippy 
the the way his harmonies go, you know, uh, just his imagination was extraordinary. And for music that is also very, very patterned and very logical, yeah, I do I do find the, the spirit of it of it just so uh, rich and fascinating. Um, so yeah, so the course is so I I I hope I haven't like sort of shocked people into into lever flipping, but they did know they were signing up to lever flipping. <laughs> um, and uh, it's really just to find a way into this colorful harmony, you know, and you just start one lever at a time, you know. So, uh, yeah, we're looking at music by uh, Bach and Dowland, also by C.P.E. Bach, uh, one of his sons. So, um, so a mixture of things just from that, particularly from that kind of historical era, because it gets a nice color in, yeah. into the harp. You know, people are used to playing in different modes, but uh, we can look at reaching kind of all the related keys and and stuff like that um it's and yeah i'm just learning little tips levers. about levering as we, go might, along. We, we might as well use these levers that we have like we have them for a reason so it's really exciting that you're encouraging people to push themselves out of their comfort zones and you know flip the levers not have to think about worrying oh i, I don't have pedals you know but it's okay you got the levers you're going for it yeah exactly and the other reason that um bach or baroque music suits us really well is the modulations don't happen in every octave at the same time mm. so where a pedal harpist if they're playing like Naderman or mozart they're going to need to shift their c pedal and have all their c's go to c sharp immediately but the lever harpist might only need uh, in baroque music you might only need a c sharp on one octave so it really suits it that's fantastic. I didn't realize yeah. it myself. Oh, oh, I'm now regretting. I wish I wasn't teaching. I could have signed up to your course myself. <laughs> we could have learned a bit. Now, you've been coming to the Heart Festival for years. I think the last time, in fact, I think the last time you were with us would have been for our 35th anniversary. We're selling, celebrating our first 40th. Can you remember when it was or how you first came to, to be at the Edinburgh International Heart Festival? Yeah, um, so uh, I, yeah, I was, I was asked to, to play there many, many years ago. So it was back in the Pleasance. Mm. It was, yeah, one of the, one of the last few years in the Pleasance. And I remember the late Carol McLaughlin was the uh, second half of the concert and I was the first half. So that's one very special memory. And of course, my late husband came with me to some of the festivals and he was never long finding somebody who had, an, uh, who could educate him in single malts. <laughs> so uh, that was that was one of the things about the Edinburgh Heart Festival he really enjoyed. Um, I have just great memories over the years playing there with Cormac de Barra mm. and uh, twice bringing over my harp ensemble from Kylemore College, College here in Dublin. I'm no longer teaching there anymore, but I have the, the most fantastic memories of kind of building them up to the level where we might get to, to Edinburgh and it was so, so enriching for them. So, um, and then with Brendan Power, the, I think it was the, the last time. And I mean, he's just, he's just such, such fun to play with, you know, he's a fantastic musician. It was a great concert, that one. I can remember kind of sitting on the floor by the side, just kind of going, this is, this is just what it's about. And, you know, the, the hall as well at Merkiston just lends itself so well to the kind of music that we play at the festival. And it was just, yeah, yes. great memories from being there. And so wonderful to have you as part of the festival again with your course. And now you've been quite busy over the past year. Um, you've had a lot, you've been doing a lot of kind of work on, co on commissions and compositions. Is that right? I understand. Yeah, you yeah, it's been, it's been kind of extraordinary. I mean, the one thing you can do in lockdown is compose mm -hmm. and uh, one of the first commissions I got uh, shortly after the pandemic broke out was a commission for a 20 minute song cycle for uh, music for children's choirs so I wrote a cycle called sevenses there used to be this ball game called sevenses and it's on each one of the the modes so the idea is the kids learn different things about music and it's it's for a mix of some of the pieces might be for choirs who sing regularly, but others might be for general use in schools. And then with that, we're we're the pieces are all written now. We're devising um, resources to help primary teachers who might not be um, might not consider themselves trained musicians to help them teach these pieces to their classroom. So we had we had one uh, we had one workshop. It was a nationwide choral workshop. And each square on the Zoom was a whole class oh. of kids. So, um, so we were doing all this stuff with found sounds and um, tapping the laptops. And <laughs> um, so yeah, so that and then uh, my most recent piece is a twenty-minute orchestral work. So that's going to be premiered in two weeks' time at the New Music Dublin Festival by the National Symphony Orchestra. So it's been it's been really full on with uh, wow. with composing. Thank God. 
Uh, the harp concerto had been finished. Uh, that was waiting in the wings for premiere last summer, but uh, sadly, sadly not to be. So that uh, uh, on is still on the on the hoping list <laughs> for some stage. That's something that you know that will eventually kind of come. Yeah. Yeah. The festival, the commission that's happening in two weeks, is that going to be an online festival that other folk can kind of tune in and kind of explore? Yeah. The music? Yes, and it's free. It's uh, the New Music Dublin Festival. It's an annual uh, festival of new music um, in Dublin. And then on the Friday night, it's the National Symphony Orchestra uh, doing uh, three three works, one by Caroline Shaw, the American composer, one by myself, and uh, one by, um, uh, this is awful, I've gone blank on her, on her first name. Uh, Buckley is her second name, and it's not Linda, it's her sister, Irene, Irene, uh, who's written magnificently for choir as well. So, uh, yeah, Irene Buckley, Caroline Shaw, and myself, with the, and David Brophy is, is conducting. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about that because it's for COVID orchestra. So there were very particular things we had to consider in the, in the writing of it. Oh, that's amazing and that's great that we'll, we'll be able to kind of tune in for that as well I mean if there's something that's come out of this last year is that we're all being able to kind of explore different types of music because well we've had the time and we've had been able to get online and explore different things so yeah, yeah well, that's that's exciting cool yeah yeah and you've you've got a new book out as well just recently, like as in this week published I do that's right yes Yay. uh with with the wonderful 80 days um, the Edinburgh Bates uh, 80 Days Publishing Company. And this is dear to my heart because that, that album you mentioned, Just So Bach, this book has um, is uh, publications of all those transcriptions. So they're now finally notated. So all the lever changes are in, in exactly the spot where they should best go. And they're designed so that they can be played on a lever of any design. So you don't have to have one type of harp for it to work. And we've also worked a lot on the lever notation and also notation of damping, uh, because some of the music is from the cello repertoire. So there's a bit of bass on managing that. Uh, and then little, you know the way the pedal harpists do their pedal charts? Yeah. So equivalence, uh, notating the equivalent of that so yeah. that you can restart. So you don't have your heart broken by having to go back to the beginning of the piece every time you want to practice a little bit. So there's all these little lever charts dotted throughout as well. So, um, and then historical notes, I've done some research on the music. So um, it's been so rewarding to, to work on that. And again, it's kind of with lockdown as, as my husband told me, used to have this phrase, too much going round, you know? And um, if you couldn't kind of, didn't get time to kind of settle yourself and uh, do the things that mattered. So one of the things was these, projects that had kind of been started was get time and really finish it properly so that's been been really 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 rewarding oh, well it's great and it's fantastic that you finally managed to get this because that sounds fascinating about your ideas about uh, the kind of lever charts and um, I've got a student just now who's playing a piece that has got lots of lever changes in it she's only just started started it and I'm kind of already at that like oh I need to get her kind of writing in and working out so yeah, yeah practice that book myself and learn how the chart works and start using it then yeah yeah well listen Amory thank you so much for dropping by it's been an absolute pleasure to to have a wee natter with you and I hope the rest of your course goes well another two Thanks days so away. much and listen huge congratulations to all of you you're just unbelievable how how you're making this happen with so many interesting events as well as the concerts and looking after us tutors and looking after everybody across the world. It's really phenomenal that the way you're doing it. That's off. Well, thank you. We've got a really strong committee at the Heart Festival and they're just they're just a fantastic bunch of people. And we've been relying on Zoom for our meetings, but they're still good crack all, <laughs> every time that I see them. We still get our cups of tea and coffee and <laughs> our cakes as we're having our meetings. Although, of yeah, course brilliant, brilliant. Amazing. Listen, Amory, I'll get you to say goodbye, but thank you so Cheerio. much. Okay. Bye. Thanks a million. Bye. Great. Well, thank you so much, Anne Marie, for having a wee chat to us. Now, I'm going to have a wee look on the chat um, here to see who all is kind of click on. I have my phone beside me. Um, we have, oh, oh, what is Tom saying? Rachel, you might need to change your colour. I have, oh, I'm not saying you look a little bit cloudy. I am on my laptop, which is a little bit old, I have to say. Oh, I think I might have actually just got unclouded myself there. Thank you very, very much, Anita, for telling me to do that. 
<laughs> Wonderful to see you, Anita. Who else have we got on? Um, Tracy Rose Brown says, bass music must have been played on historical harps. That's fantastic to have you, uh, Kaziah. Oh, Kaziah is saying you're amazing. I'm real far. Wonderful to have Kaziah. Kaziah is part of the UKHA, who are one of our sponsors for our workshops this year. It's great to have them involved in the festival. Ellie Evans is watching. Ellie, if you've ever been to our festival and if you've ever hired a harp, is the person who looks after the hired harps. As she calls them, she calls them the harp army. So I know she's dearly missing her harp army, though I understand she is dearly not missing having to tune a, like 30 harps in her harp army. I think this year is the least number of harp strings Ellie has ever tuned in the month of April. So fantastic to have you watching Ellie. We also have Dawn from, Aber from Aberdeenshire and Sabine from Paris and Adele from New Zealand. Oh my goodness, we're all, we're all kind of set. And Jennifer Port is saying that that's it fixed. I did manage to clean the lens. There we go. Fantastic. Now, we're going to have another wee guest, hopefully appearing. He will hopefully appear by magic. Let me see if I can see who is in the waiting room. We'll see who we have, who is going to join us now. <gasps> He's connecting to audio. Hello, Here I am. <laughs> Ciao, Rachel. How are you? Very well. How are you, Adriano? Great to see you. Yeah, great. <laughs> yeah, uh, actually, I, I, I'm a bit tired because, you know, here in Italy, we are one, one, one hour later than, than you, so we are supposed to, to go to sleep now. <laughs> also because we, we cannot go to the, to the jam session, the normal jam session, hard jam session after the <laughs> concert. So, uh, how, can we, how can we feel here stuck in the house uh, with, with coffee? No, no, it's not possible. So uh, Next time, uh, we should organize the virtual uh, art concert in Edinburgh. Okay, Agiano. <laughs> from from different houses in Edinburgh, but just, just because it is virtual, so COVID COVID free, so, uh, but we should be aware of the COVID. I, I hopefully that there won't be any COVID yet next year, <laughs> but. Uh, but I think that uh, okay, the next the, the next development of the virtual the virtual app um, festival could be everybody of us in Edinburgh, but in different houses. So the the, the festival is virtual, uh -huh. <laughs> but everybody of us it's in Edinburgh, and after the, after that then we can join in the side the, the, the yeah. Are you just missing Scotland, Adriano? You do like Scotland, don't you? <laughs> little bit, a little bit. <laughs> Everybody, the last time Agiano, Agiano came to our festival two years in a row, he was so like the first year we invited him back um, to perform with his sister. And then he decided to come back the third year of his own accord. He surprised us all and just appeared in a session one night and he said, I had some days off. I decided to come to the festival, play some tunes and you had a great holiday. You traveled around a bit. Is that right? It was fantastic. It was fantastic. And, uh, uh, yeah, I went to the, to the festival and then to took, because uh, uh, two years before when, when I was there for, the, for my second time uh, and we took some courses, uh, we hadn't so much time to visit Scotland as well. So uh, I decided, okay, why just, why don't I come along and uh, just, to the festival as a pretext and maybe just giving a look to, to this uh, special country that everybody is telling me that uh, is one of the best country in the world so let me see if it is if it is real or not and i must confess that it is real so yeah. I need to come back to. Oh, well, you'd be welcome back here anytime as soon as we're allowed to travel. And I would love to come and see you in Italy as well. Dearly of course, of course. Next time it's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> Angiano, you have your harp there. Um, would yeah. you for playing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. That thing. <laughs> thing. <laughs> because there is a little one, the little one, and that there is another one. Well, okay. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, it's it's a it's a habit we have. We all collect. I've got one, two, two yeah. No, the, the, the harp army. The harp the army, people. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Adriano, would you be up for giving us a wee bit of a chin? We'll see if it we'll see if it works in Zoom. See how it goes. Yeah, let's let me check it. Yeah. Just put the microphone close to the orb. <laughs> Is it working? Fantastic. 
What can I play now? Something that I do very well normally. Fantastic to hear you again, Adriano. Yes. <laughs> Let me check. Okay. Oh. Everything back to normal. Okay. So, Adriano, and you are playing on Monday, I think. That is yes. right. Isn't it? I'm telling you that. I should know that. I am on the organizing committee and I'm in the same concert as well, actually. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we are playing exactly the same evening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, great. <laughs> And you know, Adriano, I was trying to think, can you remember when we first ever met? I genuinely, was, was I it? I do remember. I do was remember. It? it was in, uh, I don't remember exactly the, the year. It, it, it could have been the 2008 or 2007 mm -hmm. or something like. Uh, and it was in Dinan, in the festival of Dinan. Uh, I've, I've never met you before. And uh, actually, I never met any other harpist because it was mm -hmm. one of the, my first... Uh, uh, time in uh, in in Dinan, so it should be should have been in 2006 2007. Yeah. I don't, don't remember. You were playing there together in the same evening of the Stanley Govic. Yes. In the Teatro de Jacobin. Uh, it was actually the only concert I missed. <laughs> what? Yes, it's true. <laughs> it's true. But uh, it was. Uh, I remember that it was uh, uh, on the Saturday night. So the. the mm. The best, uh, the, the best night ever uh, in the whole week, the, 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 main, the, the main event. And it was uh, the concert shared for, be, between you and, uh, and Tristan. Uh, yeah. But I missed it because I, I had to travel to Italy that day. So I was tearing, oh no, really, no. <laughs> yeah, I, know, I can tell you, you didn't miss much because that is the one time that I have kind of failed on stage, me and really? Tristan. That's the show. <laughs> That's the show. <laughs> oh. We played a set of jigs and we just lost it in the last set and we just started laughing and it all just went like that. It was really? just it's it's all it's got caught on camera as well. I mean we laugh about it now and we were laughing at the time and the audience thought it was hilarious as well. We were just suddenly like, I don't know what's going on. Do you know what's going on? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it was one of those moments. But it's it's great. You know, the Heart Festival world is a really kind of big, kind of friendly world. The Edinburgh International Heart Festival especially is kind of known for being friendly. We have the sessions and everybody kind of eats together and there's kind of accommodation and things. And for folk like yourself and like Anne-Marie who was on together, it's really one of these times, I guess, because we play an instrument that's so solo, we're not often on the same bill as other harpists unless you're at a harp festival. Yeah. And then, yeah, when yeah. we all meet together, we'd like to have fun. Yes, <laughs> but at that time it was. Uh, uh, but I, I was there just uh, as a son of uh, uh, of my father, who was yes, a harp maker. The, the, the so I, I didn't. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't there 
for playing because uh, mm. well, probably it was my third or fourth year that I since I was uh, starting playing harp, uh, and it was a uh, it was fantastic to 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 meet this new ambient, to this new mm. family, uh, and um, it, it was it was very. A, a strange, a strange time because, uh, uh, first of all, yes, I, I really appreciate what is beside the festival. Yes, the concert, the um, the workshops, the classes, but uh, most of most of all, and uh, I think that nowadays it's uh, what I really missed from a festival. Uh, what is uh, the, yeah, the, the backstage, mm -hmm. the convers the chats with uh, with the others, uh, with the other. Um, but exhibitors uh, or um, our players or pupils uh, and uh, what what I really felt in uh, Dinan and especially in Edinburgh mm. uh, our festival it's uh, it's exactly that that moment in which we are all to we are gathering all together in the lunch room and uh, just uh, find out our seats and uh, start chatting with everybody and you know that I love chatting even if I, <laughs> even if my English is too basic and I know some 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 like something like 30 40 vocabulars uh, vocabulary yeah, uh, words in uh, in English so your yeah. English is so much better than my Italian and many of ours that's a good excuse that's a good excuse <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know well, you know, Adriano, it's speaking of kind of this kind of friendship and these kind of like the fact that we kind of all go to these festivals and um, we actually have someone who is about to hopefully kind of appear on screen who you might know. Let me see. I know him. I know him. him. Do you know who this is? Yes, he's Eric. He's what? fantastic Eric from Sweden. <gasps> Adriano! <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Eric. Oh, Where are you? I cannot oh. see you. Ah, hang on, hang on. Ah. No, no, I cannot. Ah. Oh, yes, you are here. <laughs> Mamma mia, there you are. Rachel, hello. Hello, Eric. How are you? How are you? How is Sweden? It, it looks very dark. Are you? It's very dark. Yes, it's very dark here. It's, it's, uh... Yeah, yeah well, you are in Sweden. It's always dark. Yeah, it's, it's like <laughs> this is this is uh, this is noon here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just how we like it here. It's really weird the, 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 my Zoom collection here because uh, I, I, it, it's a sort of sandwich harpers uh, with uh, Rachel between me and you. Um, <laughs> Okay, but okay, uh, hang on, uh, go on. No, no, no. <laughs> Sorry, I shut, I shut up. I need to mute my, my microphone because I'm enjoying your, your conversation. <laughs> Eric, lovely to have you. So this is your kind of first time at the Edinburgh International Heart Festival, although we have, I, I have wanted you to come here for ages. I yes. think the first time I met you was in Denmark, um, and randomly I've met you quite a few times in Scotland. That but, right. Adriano, yeah. do you know this, that... Eric doesn't only play a harp, he plays like this another really annoying Scottish instrument. Yeah, it's very annoying. <laughs> Eric, would you like to confess to the harp world what you are also known, very well known for, and in fact has played at major festivals in Glasgow about... We, that's right, I think we met in Glasgow the first time, probably when we played at the Glasgow Piping I Festival, right. because that yes, I do play the pipes. It's the, the nemesis of the harp, or no, not really, is it? No, it's, it's, it's the, the, the companion of the harp, isn't it, really? You are a harp betrayer. <laughs> yeah, I know, yes, exactly. Ah, you know. So if you're a harpist yeah. and a pipe player in Scotland, you can make, you could do good business, because you can do <laughs> both parts of the wedding, you see. Yeah, well, you know, I have to, uh, I, I started out playing Swedish pipes, and uh, eventually I did upgrade to uh, Scottish pipes. But the first few years, people asked me all the time, why don't you play the real pipes? Uh, meaning the Scottish pipe. So I, I, I did eventually do that. Uh, but when we played those in Scotland the first time, everyone said, oh, that's a wee, wee set of pipes you have there. Uh, and they, they dubbed it, it was called the, the wee hangover pipes very quickly because they are very, they're very soft. They're like a small pipe. So they're very discreet, like, like the Swedes themselves. No, so, really? so oh. it's, it's... Here in Italy, you should, you should have been uh, something like the poor piper. Because yeah, 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 exactly. I, I will be at, at Santoniaro you, you know, you in cannot, Italy. <laughs> you cannot afford uh, Big, yeah, exactly. You know, go from city to city and and, and play. The, the pipes are easier to carry around than the harp, so you know it, it's. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. true. That's true. You... Eric, how, tell us, how did you actually start playing harp? Then, which came first, the pipes or the harp? Yeah, that is a good question. Uh, uh, that's sort of about the same time. Uh, I, I I was quite late to music. Actually, I started playing like piano when I was fifteen, sixteen. 
Um, and then uh, when I was 20, I had a friend who built a harp uh, for some reason. It was a horrible instrument. It was made of plywood and fish, fish line for strings. Wow. Uh, it was very, very, very special harp. Uh, in in the bad sense of the world of the word, uh, but but it got me started. Uh, so it, I didn't know at the time. It, it was great fun. That's like twenty five years ago, wow. almost thirty years ago. Because I'm I'm getting old now. Uh, so yeah. So I, I had that for a couple of years, and then eventually I got a proper like a Celtic lever harp, big one, uh, and uh, yeah. And I started out playing, actually only Swedish music. Uh, I I wasn't really aware of the standard repertoire at the time of you know Carolan and and all the wonderful Scottish tunes and everything. So I I played what I knew was 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 weird Swedish tunes you know on on the harp. Uh, Fantastic! And it's you're performing for us tonight tomorrow night. Now I'm going to try and get this pronunciation. Now if we were to see your band name, we would just we would just talk, say dram as in a wee dram. Yeah, but that is not what dram means. Is it drone? Am I? It, yeah, it's, like, it's the same word as drone. Uh, actually, uh, we, we say drom. Drom. And that's the old Swedish word for bagpipes. It's a drom pipe, sort of drone pipe, basically. I, did, I guess they didn't, they were happy with just playing a drone back in the old days. <laughs> Fantastic. And so, and it's with you, you're playing for us tomorrow night. I think you're opening Sunday night's concert with your wonderful wife, Anna. That's right. It's playing the... Nyckelharpa. Fantastic. Well, I can tell you actually that our administrator Toby plays the nickel harpa, so he's particularly looking forward to catching oh. you guys tomorrow night. Cool. So he's a bit gutted that he can't meet you in person or Anna in person. They would have a good kind of they would have a mini nickel harpa festival or our own harp festival. Yeah. So maybe okay. one day. Wow, amazing. <laughs> Absolutely. So Eric, thank you so much. Would you be up for playing as a wee bit of a tune, seeing as you happen to have your harp there? As it happens. <laughs> No, it's it's amazing. What a coincidence! Um, yeah, sure. Uh, I'll I'll play something sort of uplifting because we need that in these times. All the the Swedish uh, Swedish uh, way of life and the Swedish uh, national pastime is brooding basically. So the last year has been actually pretty good for Swedes because we like to, you know, spend time in the darkness and feel sorry for ourselves. That's sort of what we do best, really. Uh, but I, I thought it might be good with something more more happy. So this is a tune that some some of you might know. It's uh, uh, let's see, have I? I'll turn on or, original sound, so it hopefully will sound better with the music. Because Zoom does all kinds of funny things when you play music on it. But I hope this works. <laughs> does it sound vaguely like a harp? Yeah, sort of. So this is a, a tune by. Um, a Nyckelharpa player like 200 years ago. Uh, he was called Byskalle, and this is his sort of famous G major Polska. It's, it's one of those Polska, Polska is the Swedish uh, sort of archetypal dance music. Uh, some of them are very slow and very sad. Some are very happy, yet very sad. This is sort of in between. It's, it's sort of uh, the, the, the um, yeah, like typical Swedish ambivalence there. Uh, so uh, this is the G major Polska of Buskale. Thank you. 
something like that anyway. Bravo, Eric. Lovely. Really lovely to have and thank, you. And, some, and compliments to you, Rachel, and the whole festival for doing what you do. It's, it's just amazing. I know because I've, I've done it sort of in a smaller scale myself with a Nordic Art meeting last year. Yes. We've moved it online. In, in, by, and you were, you, you were a huge inspiration to us because I know that, you know, uh, we, we have to pull this off. And I knew you did. So, you know, we'll try to do it as well. And we sort of did. Uh, and you were, yeah, it's a big inspiration and the whole festival is just amazing what you all do. So, and Callum wow. and uh, everyone, you know, thanks so much for everything. Thank you. Well, we've got, really have got a great team and great to have you. And we're looking forward to hearing you tomorrow. Yes, and Adriano, we will hear you on Monday. Adriano, can we, I'm going to ask on behalf of Mary Scott, who I know will be wondering, how is the green parrot doing? <laughs> okay, okay. I must confess that I pre-record the, the concert of uh, that you are going to see on Monday, and I did it uh, four or five times. <laughs> at, the, at the fifth times, uh, I, I told myself, okay, I should make a double camera and I make some cuts because I didn't manage to make one tune without my parents uh, <laughs> okay but uh, you, you have to know that it was exactly on the opposite part of the house but it is uh, so loud because it was uh, so um how can i say uh, it, it didn't bear that it, 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 it would have been in the in the other part of the house it would have been present <laughs> it, 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 yes it was unbelievable unbelievable in the in the recording i could hear more his voice her voice than the harp so it was, oh, no, 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 I, I couldn't do it, I couldn't do it. so it was unbelievable I mean, it, it's it, even worse than than a pipe oh <laughs> well Adriano, your green parrot is still fondly thought of by us so in case we we're maybe glad that you've managed to edit your video so we it's not constantly squawking. <laughs> Probably I will I will send you some cuts. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's a it's a, through a private messages because it's sometimes like oh no god. <laughs> well <Again. laughs> listen, Adriano and Eric, so great to have you both on for a chat. Um, keep in touch. Hopefully we'll see you in person sometime. And we're really looking forward to hearing you both play over the next couple of days. So I will ask you to leave the meeting and I will see you soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Fantastic. Great to have Aji Anno and Eric there. Just always a pleasure to see those boys. As we were, as, as I was kind of talking about with um, Aji Anno, there's a really kind of nice kind of heart festival almost circuit that a lot of us kind of tend to teach in. And it's it's a really nice kind of sociable thing, not only for us tutors, heart festivals, but for yourselves and your courses, as you know. And actually, I know a lot of you have managed to do a little bit of socialising even in your Zoom courses. We've been opening our courses 15 minutes early for a wee chit chat and um, finding out where each other's from um, etc and so yeah we hope that you've been enjoying that now let me see who is all kind of checking in on the chat just now before we get our next guest in I'm going to scroll down a little bit oh everyone's loving Adriano's music very happy to see Adriano again hop says Grace we very much enjoyed Grace's Grace Stewart Skinner's playing as part of one of the a new generation concerts which screened today at one o'clock there's another one tomorrow at one o'clock and another one on Monday at one o'clock free to view Maureen from a in America is tuning in Maureen has an amazing podcast a heart podcast called moon over the trees well worth checking out and she's also the stage manager for Somerset Heart Festival in USA so they moved online last summer and um, so we've kind of been communicating a little bit with them and Patsy said and saying hello and Anouk lovely to hear from you from the Netherlands and who else have we got Andrew Nicholson saying beautiful Tom is clapping from Japan who else have we got? Um, oh, wonderful. And Adele again, New Zealand. Oh, Eleanor Turner. Now, Eleanor Turner actually has an event on Tuesday that Adriano is part of and Ailey Robertson. Um, it's a kind of fundraising event, I believe, for the Glastonbury. I'm pronouncing that wrong. 
Um, but they're, they have a wonderful kind of a heart concert on Tuesday night that's well worth tuning into. It's a kind of fundraising concert. We'll put the link up at some point. Um, Moira Sinclair, lovely to have you. It's an old family and a friend of ours. And Lorena Strachan. Lorena is a long-standing committee member of ours. You might recognise her as she is the hub person normally in Merkison. And this year, she's taken on the role of the merchandise. And if you haven't had the time to look at the merchandise yet, do go and check it out in the Heart Festival page because, well, well, I mean, I've nearly spent, like, I spent a good proportion of my fee already for teaching on heart merchandise, on mugs and jugs and jewellery and tea towels and stained glass. Um, and oh my goodness, and I haven't even got to the artist merchandise bit yet. Do check it out because there's some wonderful celebratory um, pieces of merchandise. Now, we are going to kind of move on just now and this morning we all kind of started our courses and I had a wee ask for you all on Facebook. I asked you if you could all kind of put up a picture of what your um, what your kind of harp, your harp scene was, your kind of learning environment, seeing as we're not all in the same room in Murkison, it was just lovely to see where you were all kind of hanging out and enjoying your courses. So we're going to queue up a little bit of a video now so that we can see some of your harps and where you were learning and where you were in the world. So cue Callum with the video. Fantastic. Wonderful there. So just really, really great there to see where you've all been learning. And we have another guest with us. And the guest that we have with us just now is Miss Maddie McLeod, or Ms. Maddie Morrison, as she's also known as, up on the Isle of Lewis. And Maddie, the music that was the backing of that is a little piece that came from something you're responsible for. Some folk might have caught it at the end of last night concert. It was the premiere of the 9040 collaboration. Can you tell us a little bit about it and what it all is? Gosh, yeah, such a nerve wracking time for it to be pre premiering last <laughs> night. I was just like, oh, is it gonna work? Um, so <laughs> yeah, it was it was months back at the AGM that I maybe stupidly um, suggested <laughs> that we should do something. And, um, and you guys, took it on and thought yeah who better to do it than Mary <laughs> oh my word cue Mary has stressed me for the last few months um but uh it, it's just been absolutely fantastic Isabel kindly donated her version of Rory Dell's port which was actually something that I played as a child in the Clarsen so you know when she said oh we're gonna play that I thought brilliant I've done that fantastic um and then, and then I just I had to I had to start recording bits of it and putting it together as a as a main track so that people could actually record alongside it. Um, um, and of course we had to decide who on earth we were going to invite. So the easiest thing, the easiest option actually was to get every single branch involved. So it's so great to see all thirteen branches represented. Um, in this collaboration. 
and then um, the committee members of both Heart Festival, Executive Council and that all got involved and um, it grew and it just yeah it's amazing wonderful it really is I mean it's a true celebration so it's celebrating 90 years of the Clarkson Society which is just that's immense when you think of it 90 years mm -hmm. of the Clarkson Society I can't quite get a picture of that it's just it's, it's brilliant and then for the 40th EIHF it's just a perfect way and you know we some of us were talking about it earlier just how you know we've we've kind of got used to seeing collaborations over the past year you know everybody in little tiny boxes and we're kind of all used as heart players as being in little tiny boxes on Zoom. Yeah. And things and what we all really liked about yours was that you never get more than two people on the screen and you really get to see who they are and there's so many faces that many people will know from Clarsville Society branches and from our own festival as well and it was just a really lovely way to finish off the first night I think it's just beautiful definitely um i mean yes you've got you've got those committee members who are at the festival every single year and anybody who comes to the festival sees these faces so um even if they weren't able to participate in the video they would see them and go ah i know that person and it would just make them feel like they were here um i mean I, i've i've been saying all all day today it's like we've had a heart festival in our living room <laughs> it's been amazing and seeing people posting pictures and comments um, and just being on Zoom with everybody, I, I, I didn't actually think it would feel like the heart festivals in my living room, but it really is. And we, we even had the late night sessions last night. You were sitting in in those yourself. We could see you and your dog kind of came along and said hello. I think that's <laughs> one of my favourite aspects about online heart festivals with Zoom is you get to meet everybody's pets. We had a couple of cats coming in in classes today. <laughs> <laughs> Holly will always come and see who's on the, the laptop she's with me for all my lessons um and she always just has to come and have a wee nosy sometimes she recognizes uh the the, the sound of the person's voice um I don't think she was recognizing anybody in particular last night for the session but she had to come and have a have a wee lick <laughs> Oh, bless. Well, she's very cute. I remember meeting her actually at the Heart Festival a couple of years ago when we were, I think we were getting something from the store and it, you'd, you'd not long had her actually. And I remember I was like, oh, it's a dog. I love dogs. I think like, I do love my dogs. We're very much a dog family. So I'm enjoying seeing all those pets. In fact, watch out folk who are watching at home. I may put out a shout out tomorrow or the day after for maybe some pets at home heart so yeah we might put out a, a wee shout at some point for in um, what pets are currently enjoying the online heart festival as well because we're really not usually allowed to attain the work i said have to say <laughs> <laughs> well listen no. Mary, tell us how can folks so we've already got the Rory Dallas port the collaboration is online it's on youtube it's on the classic society facebook page now we shared their post earlier do go and have a look at that like their page as well because it's a fantastic organization really and they're they're the ones that present and produce this heart festival we could not exist without the Clarkson society I don't think many folk realize that that if it wasn't for the Clarkson society we just would not happen we really are so grateful for them letting us you know have a festival so do go and check out their facebook page and if folk are wanting to get a little bit more involved you can play along with the piece at the end of the a new generations and if they want to actually learn it as well mary yeah so i, I recorded a, a pre-festival workshop um and um it's a bit of a long workshop it's like well, not nearly an hour but it goes through every single part so there's five parts and honestly even if you've just started playing the harp you can play part two um do one finger do two hands it's an octave you can definitely do it um the tune is part one um part three is putting the tune together with a bit more of a developed left hand uh part four is some um, chunky chords or brush them if you want to um, and then all oh, part five is the deedle 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 dum <laughs> that's a quite hard bit I had to practice that bit a few times I remember you <laughs> but that's like that's what the beauty of Isabel Miras so Isabel Miras is one of our artistic advisors and she's also president of the Clarkson Society and her group arrangements are just they're so accessible at every level. Like I remember when we played some of them a couple of years ago at the, it was, I want to call it Host of Hearts. I can't remember, if, or was it 100 Hearts? 
can't remember the last big a few of them. <laughs> and it's just like there's something for everyone in it she's just very good at like writing these group ensemble arrangements so worth checking out that um arrangement of a uh, Rory Dalport and huge well done to you for like editing it and everything like <laughs> amateur <laughs> so good and it's just been a pleasure for it to be premiered and to continue being part of the festival this this weekend so well, it showcases the society as a whole you've got the really young ones and then the slightly older and um and it, it honestly it just gives a really big picture of what the society is all about it's all inclusive and Isabel's music was perfect for that um, but it's it's just amazing seeing everybody at home and one person did film outside. They were very brave. <laughs> Harps outside and cold winter days because this was all <laughs> in the winter as well, wasn't it? <laughs> but actually, I think it's colder now than I think it probably was a few months back when people were recording. So <laughs> it's snowing here like about two hours ago. Like yeah. it was actually it's snowing here nonstop. Oh, goodness me. Yeah. I, I was joking with my class this morning, actually. We had quite a few Americans on the call, um, and I was like, you're just going to have to get used to the fact that I will comment every day on how the weather is, because it changes literally our, like, this is, I know it's stereotypical, but it's it's a true thing in Scotland. <laughs> we have four seasons in one day. Exactly, exactly. You know, we, we woke up to the snow, and then by the, by the morning, I, I actually put a wash on. Fancy that putting a wash on at the heart festival who'd have thought it and and it was we were able to put it out because all the snow would had gone because it was sunny you just wouldn't think you couldn't write it you honestly couldn't but i love scotland listen Mary, a huge thank you to joining us and um, you're up in the isle of lewis and do send your our love to your mother christine who's with you as well oh, yeah. christine um, is usually the person who's responsible for the registers at the heart festival and she mo makes the most amazing shortbread it's like it's just coated it's so good it's coated in sugar so i think that's one of the things i'm missing the most this year to be honest is your mother's shortbread so <laughs> well she's really enjoying actually just sitting back and relaxing because normally she wouldn't be able to be in the concerts or any of the courses workshops anything because she's yeah. always rushing around making sure everybody is is doing okay so she's just sitting back and relaxing which is amazing so well deserved very well deserved and a huge thank you for you for doing that and to your brother actually i think it's your brother this year that's taken on all the kind of rushing around he's at the <laughs> backstage just now in the zoom letting everybody in so a huge thank you to callum for doing that and he's been helping out a lot at the zoom workshops along with our admin assistant toby who's just been a total rock as well during all this the pair of them together have been what would we do without them <laughs> <laughs> listen i'm gonna let you go Mary. but thank you so much for stopping by Thanks for having me, Rachel. Bye. So, absolutely wonderful there to have Mary up in the Isle of Lewis. She's kind of been around the society, the Clarkswood Society and the Edinburgh Heart Festival ever since she was just a, a knee high to a grasshopper, as they say. Just wonderful to have her. And huge thank you to her again for doing that collaboration. Make sure you check it out. It's on the Heart Festival's YouTube channel and it is also on the Clarkswood Society's Facebook page. If you can look that up on Facebook or we've linked to it in, in one of our last posts on Facebook. Do go and check out their page, like it as well, because they do such great work. So, we're going to have one more guest on and um, we're going to kind of go for another kind of 10 minutes or so, but we're going to enjoy a little bit of a film again. Now, this isn't actually harp music. Um, you will spot somebody who you recognise in it, one of our tutors and one of our performers from tomorrow. So we're going to get Callum McLeod to queue up the film and we'll see if you recognise one of our tutors and one of tomorrow's performers in it.
There you go. Well, that surely was not harp music, but did you recognize the person that was in there? The person waving about the flags? That person was Esther Swift and she's joining me now. We are hopefully going to get her camera on. There she is. Hello. Rachel, how are you doing? How is Edinburgh? This is another Edinburgh International Heart Festival and I'm not in Edinburgh. So how is the wonderful city of Edinburgh? Yeah, I heard your chat about the weather and Edinburgh is very much the same. It's, yeah. um, I can't keep up with it at all, but you know, it's, it's good. It's really nice spending so much time here for a change, just like being in one place and yeah, yeah it's really nice. It feels like, yeah, it's been a, it's been, it's been a nice um, reflective year for me. So I'm really fortunate. You've, you've managed to keep pretty busy. I mean, that was something pretty epic there that was just premiered a while ago. Can you tell us a little bit, because there wasn't a harp in it, but can you tell us a little bit about what it was? Yes, that was a bit of a mad one. Um, it was basically um, a commission by Hidden Door Festival, who are an Edinburgh-based um, festival who explore um, hidden spaces. And so they've been working really hard over the past year and putting loads of online content up. Um, so they have a live show every two weeks um, and they have lots of different types of art, art um, exhibited as part of their live show. And so I was lucky enough to get one of the commissions from them and I made this um, super mad, heavily improvised outdoor piece, which um, in which I made three flags. You might've seen me kind of waving <laughs> waving my flag around there so that was my way to kind of conduct the whole group um, and so I picked 20 of my maddest friends who live <laughs> in Edinburgh who are sort of all here at the moment because they're not away touring or anything so they're kind of around anyway and um, so that was really really handy and um, I put them together on Portobello Beach down um, on the east coast here in Edinburgh and um, yeah, I, I gave them a really simple score, simple piece of music to follow roughly. Mm -hmm. And I went flags at them, Rachel. And it's great. That's fantastic. So it was all kind of pretty imp imp like pure kind of improvisation. And that's actually kind of bringing us around to what you're doing. You're tutoring at the festival. Is that right? From what yeah. I'm understanding. I'm not in your course, but I know some, some of my students were actually setting up for it. So I was like, oh, you're going to have so much fun with Esther. Yeah, and it was so great. We had such a fun time today. Um, yeah, my course has been about improvising and composition. So that that um, piece actually was based around um, three different tunes, and so I it was it was really simple structurally. It was basically around an A chord for the first section. So mm -hmm. there's this tune that was kind of passed between all the string string members of the band. Um, and then the second section was passed between the brass and the wind section of the band. And then the final section was uh, for the singers. So it was like a little song um, and it was just around an F chord. So there was basically just these two chords um, and then these, these three kind of tunes. Um, so yeah, it sounds like it's, you know, it, it would be hard to put together, but actually because the musicians are so great, and because they were so up for just responding in the moment mm -hmm. and um, yeah, improvising together in, in, in an ensemble, then it was just amazing. It was a magical experience. And just, I mean, the joy of just even playing together, but playing together as well, getting to play together on Portobello Beach, that's not a normal kind of gig venue, is it? Yeah, it was hilarious. There was this fisherman who, I think he was a bit peeved that there was like some music happening. <laughs> nice morning fish. And he um, he was sort of like putting up his fishing rods for ages, and then he he kind of noticed that there were musicians in the <laughs> sea, and he had to walk through some like this tuba player and this like alp horn, and he just kind of seemed a bit annoyed that they were like getting in his way, which is really funny. Um, but yeah, we had some nice dogs joining us on the beach who like joined in, and um, some beautiful singing birds too. So. Oh. And it felt amazing like the energy to get to play music with, with some of my really good pals again um, and make live music in some in a place that isn't really associated with music as well it felt really like special to kind of yeah I suppose repurpose the beach for music a musical place as a yeah. 
place. And the idea with the semaphore flags as well, kind of bringing it back round to kind of the sea and things like that. That's really cool. Yeah. So people can see, they can see the full piece. Um, it's called, am I, is it the call or the calling? Can you remind me what it is? Yeah, the call. Yeah, the call. So Absolutely. if you Google the call um, on YouTube and Esther Swift, you should be able to kind of see the full piece. It's pretty magical. It's a good one, you know, to kind of, I think after we're all kind of a little bit heart tight at around that kind of like 5 p.m. kind of moment of the heart festival, it's a good one to just kind of sit and go, ah, it certainly chilled me out after like my last course and kind of laptop art this evening. Well, listen, and Esther, you are playing for us tomorrow. You um, were part one of the kind of lucky artists that got to film in Greyfriars Kirk. Yeah. Um, you're playing pedal harp, is that right? Yeah, that's right. It was amazing. What a treat to go and play in Greyfriars. Um, and yeah, I, I really enjoyed getting to just like do a gig for the first time in a year. Um, so yeah. But you've been keeping busy. I understand that you've kind of been involved actually in a pro in a project that actually I'm going to bring someone into in about and you can maybe kind of... Um, tell us a little bit more about this project once you see who this person is if it's okay Anna. Anna. <laughs> Hi. wow thank you for joining us what time is it in new zealand at the moment it's 9 30 a.m on sunday morning oh that's not too bad <laughs> no quite quite a pleasant time and a, and a pleasant autumn morning here this is yeah autumn of you guys so an absolute pleasure Anna to have you with us Anna Dunwoody is a harp teacher and performer who is based in Auckland down under in New Zealand and she came to our festival was it 2019 Anna or was it 2018? 2019 and I really want to say you know a big congrats to the 40th Edinburgh Heart Festival. I would so have loved to have been there with you guys this year. And what I really miss is being able to clap for the performers and, and give that feedback that you're like, yeah, yeah, I just really enjoyed that. You know, when you look at a screen, it's like, I feel a bit silly actually. <laughs> Well, Anna, it's so lovely. You know, we were kind of talking, Esther, we were talking earlier, all three of us were all in New Zealand at the same time last year in February. Me and Esther kept on just missing each other, as in Esther would be at Anna's house and I'd go to Anna's house the day after. Yeah, yeah, I think we were honestly a day apart the whole time, weren't we? It was so <laughs> I, I think we were all in Rotorua at the same time. I think we had breakfast with Esther and lunch with you, Rachel, but yes. Esther had moved on. Yeah. Oh yeah, and I really wanted to go to hear you, Rachel, but I think it was literally like a day and I couldn't make it for some reason. Oh, anyway. Just like flown in or something and hadn't quite like, cause jet lag, it's, it's a thing when you go that far, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Definitely is a thing. <laughs> <laughs> so can you tell us a little bit, Esther or, or Anna, can you tell us to, um, about what you've got kind of Esther doing for you over the next wee while? Yes, yeah. So in two weeks time, we're really lucky because our conditions have been so different from yours and the rest of the world that we're, we've got very few restrictions. So in two weeks time, we have um, a harp weekend here in Auckland. And I think we have between 25 and 30 harpists gathering. And Esther has written us an amazing suite called Five Ways to Travel, uh, Five Ways to Move, sorry. And um, we're going to come together, the, the harpists have been practicing um, their parts separately and we'll come together and work on our ensemble skills. And then have a little, con <coughs> excuse me, a little concert at the end of the weekend to show off to our friends and families what we've been doing. Fantastic. So Esther, that must be amazing to have another kind of project to work on just now when you've got the time to kind of be working on it at home. Oh my gosh, so amazing to write for Anna, to write for my friends in New Zealand and think about the, tr the travel actually, like as, as a sort of theme for that, um, for that suite of music, because it's such a big part of my life. So to have that totally taken away mm. um, and to reflect on, on how that feels um, it's been really great. It's, it's been quite nostalgic actually writing that music and thinking about that distance between us. Um, yeah, it's, it's been, and it's also just been great to keep in touch with Anna because Anna makes me feel so at home when I go to New Zealand. And she got <laughs> we, just love Your we, we love We love you, Anna. We love Scottish Heart Sisters. <laughs> Yeah, she's definitely mother um, to Scottish 
Harpers in general when, <laughs> when we go over to New Zealand. It's so lovely. Um, well, listen, Anna and Esther, thank you so much for both popping on. And Anna, thank you for popping on first thing on a Sunday morning as well, when you should be kind of snoozing and kind of taking it easy before your kind of busy day. I know that you've got a rehearsal later today. So a huge thank you for popping in and saying hello and just kind of demonstrating how truly international this festival is this year. It's great. Well, it's well, I'm looking forward to continuing to watch and take part in some workshops. So well done, you guys. It's just lovely to see you. Thank you. Well, listen, I'll say goodbye to you both. Have a great day, Anna and Esther. We can't wait to see you as part of a tomorrow evening's concert. Thanks, okay. I'd like to just say thank you so much for such an incredible festival as well. I've absolutely loved the concerts and yeah, it's been amazing to catch up with everyone. So thanks so much for bringing it all together. No bother. We, they've got an amazing team behind this festival and it's just a true honour to be able to kind of put it on for all of you guys. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> take care Bye. see you later right folks we're gonna have one last check in and see kind of on who's watching now i can, did shut my phone over so let me see if i can get the live stream up again and i will kind of see who's all kind of been seeing and seeing and saying hello to us and um, before we get our final guest up lots of folk oh very lots of folk very excited to see anna um huge thank you she really is a very kind of special lady down in new zealand looked after us all so well and shelly fair play hello lovely to see you shelly has been another kind of lockdown hero of the harp world she has been having a big harp ensemble and these kind of big kind of group kind of ensemble zoom kind of lesson she's been an absolute trooper on that so great to see that she's out and look webb um, is tuning in from dublin look webb is another one one of our young musicians, young harpists who took part in the A New Generation concert. He started off this afternoon actually at one o'clock. You can catch up on that um, whenever you like and of course there's another one at 1pm tomorrow and 1pm on Monday. So fantastic and I'm just going to take one thing. Okie dokie, we are going to about to let in our final guest and we've got something a little bit special actually. I'm just going to let her in now. We have joining with us um, we'll see if we can unmute her. Hello, Shani. Let's see. We have Miss Shani Moody here, and she is going to actually entertain us for the last kind of few minutes. Now, Shani uh, is a harpist for an organization. Hi, Shani. How are you doing? Hi, yeah. <laughs> Good, thank you. How are you doing? No, bad. Lovely to have you. I was just about to tell our audience at home that you're here um, after a little bit of discussion with a fantastic organisation that does a lot of work here in Scotland and actually in the UK called Music in Hospitals and Care. Now, they actually visited our festival a few years ago and we did a little bit of a workshop talking about what it is the work that the organisation does. Would you be able to tell us a little bit about normally what the kind of work that the organisation does? Absolutely. So um, I'm fortunate enough uh, to work for this wonderful organisation and we go into hospitals and care homes and care settings mainly. So I've been working in intensive care units, high dependency wards and um, mainly in neonatal units as well. So we try to take that online and we've been doing a project called Lullaby Hour with a group of different, uh, different musicians as well. So yeah, it's been really lovely. I don't know why the camera or at you. I'm going to look at you. I'm sorry. <laughs> we can see you. You're looking beautiful there with your harp, Shani. And it's really <laughs> posing with your beautiful starfish harp. <laughs> um, and so the lullaby hour, we just thought it would be really lovely if to end today's live stream, um, in the spirit of the kind of things that you do for music in the hostels, just kind of making everyone chill out, okay? Because we are kind of getting to 20 to 11. We all need to get a good night's sleep before we start our courses tomorrow morning. So we're going to end tonight with a uh, Shani's going to play um, a beautiful lullaby. So can you tell us anything about the one that you're going to play to finish? Yes, absolutely. So I'm playing Lady Lothian's Lilt because it's from the Lothians and that's where we would all be. <laughs> um, it's from the Straloch Lute manuscript. And, you know, you wouldn't think, oh, let's play a lute piece in, in a hospital, perhaps, but it really does soothe people it's a very calming tune and um, part of our training is how to sort of recognize if people's heart monitors are lowering or, or that kind of aspect of of music um, so if you can if you can 
relax if, if that's if you're able to wherever you are maybe like even close your eyes and just make sure your breathing is nice and regulated it's just it's a nice thing to be able to do to like let your mind drift whilst you're listening to some music um anyway without further ado i'm going to finish actually with uh after that a lovely gallic tune called rila munin down which i know rachel i can't i don't know if you even taught me that would you believe it? But anyway, <laughs> here we go with some lovely soothing tunes. Thank you so much to Edinburgh International Heart Festival, to Rachel and the whole group. Thank you. 